welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a haunt... Blah, 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 blah. A haunt cast. No, a podcast. <laughs> for, I told you I mispronounce everything right before we went live. <laughs> Anyways, we are having... A, it's been a month of interviews, and we've had some really, really great people on... Um, Continuing the tradition of bringing on people that are smarter than us and more knowledgeable than us, and there's a lot of them out there, but we have one of the best this week. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy. I've been looking forward to this conversation for quite some time as we're sitting down with Paul Lanner from Haunters Against Hate. Paul, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I guess the first question is... Uh, Tell us the uh, story behind and about what Haunters Against Hate is for anyone that does not know. Well, the, gen the genesis of Haunters Against Hate was formed, it's, geez, almost five years now. Um, no, well, 2020 took 10 years, so it was 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 shifted time around. <laughs> yeah, really. You're right. Um, it was right after the Orlando Pulse massacre. Mm -hmm. And a review team out of Ohio said some really unpleasant, very homophobic things online. And that sparked an outrage from some haunts in Louisville, Kentucky that did not want these reviewers to come to their haunts anymore. So what happened is they reached out to me because it, I was doing advertising for a bunch of haunts and asked if I could come up with a name, with a logo, a design. And I did. And they wrote an open letter on Facebook to this group and expressed that they were no longer welcome at these haunts. And I think at the time there was 22 haunts that signed on to the letter. Um, and they, the haunts were just going to let it go with that and say, it's over, it's done with, you know, we, we said what we want to. And I thought about it and I said, you know what? No, I don't want, I don't want to let this go. I want to take something that's so unpleasant, so filled with hate and start turning it into something good and make something positive out of it. So I took Haunters Against Hate and I started making t-shirts. I started designing pins. I started doing patches. I created a website. I trademarked the logo and I started going out there and selling these products to people and haunts and haunters with the intention of raising funds that I could donate to LGBTQ organizations across the U.S., especially focusing on youth. So mm -hmm. that's the genesis of Haunters Against Hate and what it evolved or how it's evolved so far. I mean, I haven't even, I haven't, haven't even spoken about the series of books of haunters that I've done. Mm -hmm. Right. Which, which is almost like an outlet for haunters who have submitted their photos. And I've gotten photos from, Australia, from Germany, from the UK. And it's really interesting getting the stories from these haunters about why they became haunters, what haunting means to them. So it, in essence, Haunters Against Hate has given a lot of haunt actors a voice, which I think is very important. Yeah, and I couldn't agree more because, I mean, um, there's a lot of, you know, people who, We'll try to silence groups, and it's not. It, it's nice to have a space that we can talk and be recognized. So well, I, yeah. I appreciate of, you for doing that. A lot of these haunt actors, you know, especially in the LGBTQ spectrum, look as a, their haunt and their haunt family as their family, especially ones that have been kicked out by their, you know actual families. So they have nowhere to go and they, they find that these group of actors that they work with have become their extended family. So they must have a voice and they must be recognized. So I think that's very important. I've gotten some very, very touching emails through the years from some haunters saying that I've helped some of them come out. Um, one I got that said they were getting ready to kill themselves. And because of the Book of Haunters, they were able to 
say, you know what, I'm not alone in this and I'm going to be okay. And that is the reason for Hunters Against Hate. If you can, if I can help one person, I've accomplished the goal. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely a very important subject and it's cliche to say that we're a divided nation right now. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that's beyond cliche. And I think the haunt community is large enough that we're kind of a microcosm of that division a lot of times. And that unfortunately does mean there are hateful individuals in the haunt community and there needs to be a way, you know, to speak out against that. And that's one of the things haunters against hate really does provide. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. I mean, you can, I try to reach out, you know, these people have reached out to me to tell me what's going on. And the, the key thing is education and making these haunt owners aware of the situation. A lot, a lot have come around. A lot of are accept, a lot are accepting, but you're going to get that group that are resistant. Um, yeah. So the thing is, you know what? Recognize, stop, stop saying hateful words. Stop dead naming your trans allies and your trans haunt actors. That that is the worst thing you could do. Use proper pronouns when addressing people. Keep key things like that will go a long way, ultimately. Right. You know, I, I've seen it happen to me at a convention, um, at one of the major conventions. I've, I've seen owners come up to my booth and look at the booth and, like, scoff at it and walk away. Some people you're not going to be able to get through to, no matter what you do. Um, but I try and do it with compassion, with understanding, and not, you know, hatred against hatred, because that's senseless. You know, it's like, let's talk about what is the issue and why you're so offended by it and how can I help you overcome it and realize that we're all in this together ultimately, you know, so yeah, that's yeah. all. I, I just keep doing that. That's all I can try and keep on doing. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping with the books because some of the haunt owners have purchased books that their actors are in. Maybe by reading the books too, they'll understand more and say, you know what? I need to learn. Yeah, and that's that's a really good thing, and I, I hope that you're changing hearts and minds um, that were otherwise closed. Yes, you know? I really hope so, and and I, I want to really think positively and think I have accomplished yeah. that with, I'm not saying with the whole community, I, I'm not going to be that egotistical to think <laughs> But well, <laughs> as you pointed out, not everybody can change right. or they're not um, able to change right now. They may be able to right. in the future. Right. right. Um, but one person at a time. I mean, mm -hmm. every, every journey starts with that first step. Yeah. So what's something that that haunts can do to make it known that they are um, an inclusive haunt? You know, what are some things that they can do? I, uh, the key thing right now is, you know, when, when Haunters Can Say first started, I had what, 22 haunts and I now have over 150 haunts that have become members of Haunters Against Hate. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is, you know, these people, these haunts can say, you know, we're part of Haunters Against Hate. We understand. We are inclusive. Please come join with us. And... I think that's important. And here, an example, one great example is a haunt in Indianapolis, a haunt I, wor I worked at as a haunter um, and did advertising for. When I first went to this haunt, I went as a guest, you know, just a customer. And I went with two of my friends and we walked through and we got to the end and this guy pulls up in a golf cart and says, we'd love for you guys to go through again, VIP. And I was like... Well, that's awfully nice. Thank you. And we did. And it was a lot of fun. We thanked him and we drove on merry way home. And while I was in the car, I don't have the best of hearing. And one of my friends said, did you hear that one haunt actor call us fags? And I was like, no, I missed that. And he's like, well, when we went through the second time, that actor was not there. Wow. So that guy in the golf cart, which I found out later on was one of the haunt owners, and he, I guess another actor told him, and that actor was fired immediately. 
correct response. That was that's yeah. good, good, good on that haunt. And because of that, I ended up working with that haunt and doing all their advertising and design because they were so supportive. And so, you know, that's what it's about. Yeah. And, and it was immediate. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Immediate. It is really hard to fire an actor in the middle of the night. It's always yeah. a difficult thing to do. Right. I've had right. to do it once or twice. We've had to do it once or twice, but it's always very difficult. Yeah. Okay. It's not tolerated. Yeah. And in the years that I've worked at that haunt, I don't anymore. Um, I've seen they, they don't put, they don't tolerate any of that at all. And that, that's an inclusive haunt. All are welcome. You know, it's like, do your job if you're professional and, you know, no matter where you fall on the spectrum, just be professional. Yeah. You know, have fun. You know, don't be rude. Don't be condescending. Don't be insulting. You know, that's not what it's about. Yeah. Uh, Haunts are supposed to be fun. <laughs> this is fun, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's, yeah. what, that's what people keep telling me. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. All right. And, and you can't have fun if you feel like, you know, there's hatred, against, like genuine hatred against you. you know? Right. Because, you know, we, we go to haunts for a safe fear, and mm -hmm. that converts the safe fear into a very unsafe fear. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and think about it. When you think about it, aren't haunts basically theater? Yeah. You know, and, you know, you have makeup artists, you have actors, you have set decorators, designers, and... I mean, there's a lot of LGBTQ people involved in the arts. So keep that in mind. You know, it's very important. Yeah. You know, watch what you're saying. You know, one of the things I've heard, and I've actually said um, before, is that the haunt community has a history. If you go back to the JC era, you go back to the 70s and 80s, of being one of the few places at that time LGBTQ people could be relatively safe and integrated, but that was relative to a very hostile outside world. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very relative thing. And I think, yeah, we have a history of being this safe space, but that doesn't mean we've kept up with the times as an industry. Mm -hmm. What, what counted as inclusion 50 ish years at 40, 50 years ago does not today. And we right. need to be aware of that. Well, and I think, I think stated in the recent climate over the past several years, you know, people have been given a free reign to be bullies more now. Yeah. That's yeah. True. And that needs to be reined in and it's not acceptable. I don't care who you are. Bullying is not acceptable. And I mean, even don't be a monster like who I admire greatly. You know, they're, they're strong against bullying and, you know, I'm with them 100%. It's just not acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredible thing. Uh, what you're doing. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. so. it's, it's just, I, I'm not doing it for any fame, for fortune, nothing. I just want people to feel comfortable. I want people to just accept people for who they are and ultimately to be able to give back to LGBTQ youth across the U.S. because they need it the most. And that, that's the satisfaction. And, and looking at your website, you have donated to a lot of LGBTQ groups yeah. all over the country. Coast, I think you're tri-coastal with your donations, even. I think you, I, I've donated from California, Oregon, all the way to the East Coast in Virginia, you know, and all places in between. You know, people will tell me about a place. Uh, the most recent one is called Dreams of Hope, which is an LGBTQ organization that uh, specializes in theater arts for youth in LGBT, LGBTQ youth that's based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I chose that because... Uh-oh. No, no, no. I just lost the thing. Shit. It is the star of George Romero's Day of the Dead. And she's from Pittsburgh. So okay. I wanted to show the support to the Pittsburgh group. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it, the list is impressive. It's a who's who of these United and States. You guys have vanished. No, I, I, we're back now. We should be back now. I hope we're back. Are we back now? Hello. We should be back now. We had a a, a brief thing there, but we should be back. Hang on, I'm gonna try refreshing. Okay. And okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Oh, there you are. 
Sorry about that. That is that was on me. <laughs> That was that was a hundred percent my screw up because my touchpad is hypersensitive and it read me moving it as a swipe, and it went back when I did not want it to. <laughs> yes. So stop touching your computers. The the the, the thing there, right? <laughs> well, I have to switch between. It's it's it's. A, okay. I have other things I have yeah. to manage. Is the problem? I know. But anyway, sorry about that, Paul. We're we are here. We're back. We're fine. Hang on. Yeah. Did you hear what I was saying about? Yes. Pittsburgh? We could hear you fine. Um, <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. We are you fine. You came in loud and clear the whole time. Okay. Um, so yeah, Pittsburgh all over um, all over the country. Amazing stuff. And the, the charity, like you said, to describe the uh, the theater arts charity in Pittsburgh. Uh, yes. so. and, and the other nice thing about Hunters Against Hate is, you know, it gives me an outlet as well for my regular job. This is not my regular job. This is what I do on the side. This is my passion. So... It's it's about giving back ultimately. Yeah. Right. And all of the the list of the haunts that are included and the um and the charities that you've donated to are on huntersagainsthate.com. Yep. I don't think we've said the dot com yet, so yep. uh, putting yeah. that in there. I was just updating the website a little today, so Yeah. Huntersagainsthate.com. It's yes. dot net no <laughs> I'm not doing the home star runner. Page, Hunters Against Hate as well. No. Okay. Yeah. And then, I mean, we could talk if you want, you know, about what I'm researching now. Okay. So come to its fruition. We will see. Well, one thing but, I wanted to um, run by you. This was something that came up in last week's podcast. We had my friend Patrick O'Keefe on, who is a community admin expert. He literally has written two books on the subject. So I think he mm -hmm. might know a thing or two about it. Uh, but one of the things we asked him the question, how do we build more diverse and inclusive haunt communities? One of the things he said was it's important to seed the community properly. If you start out with a core group that's diverse and has the type of people you want, you're going to naturally attract more people like that. Mm -hmm. If you have all you know, straight white men in your core group, you're going to get straight white men <laughs> coming in as actors and as outsiders. Is that something you agree with? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Um, the more diverse your organization or the people who create the haunt are, the more diverse your group is going to be. Un unless, say, it's cis white men who started the haunt, but they are extremely liberal and very open and welcoming, then, you know, then it's fine. But, you know, you, it tends, like attracts like, usually. Yeah. And, and this goes back to the representation and why it matters so much. Mm -hmm. Because, A, it's important for the people to see themselves in other media, including haunting. And also, it's important for others to be exposed to people not like them. Right. Well, and the other thing, too, is say, for example, that you hire an LGBT haunter, and they, they love it, and they think it's fantastic. They're going to go out and tell their, their friends, you know, maybe you want to be a part of this, and you can bring more people in that way. And, yeah. You know, tell their friends, come visit the haunt. And that, you know, it expands and it, it grows exponentially that well, that way. You know, if they, if they go back and say, you know, I've been so mentally abused at this place, it's going to get out and eventually it's going to worm its way back and, you know, negative publicity and, you know, it's not good. It's just not good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's better to want, to be open and have everybody feel comfortable in participating in what you're doing, both customers and actors and staff alike, um, right. than it is to exclude anyone. Agreed. Right. In fact, some of the some of the haunts that I'm nearby in Kentucky and Indiana and stuff, they they have me and they have Hunters Against Hate special Hunters Against Hate nights that you know are marketed and advertised for the LGBT community, and on that night they give back a portion of their proceeds to Hunters Against Hate, which is then donated, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that's a great, great way of them showing their support. Yeah. yeah. And, and like you said, those outward shows of support, they, they, they are at least a strong indication. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. absolutely. And what I'm trying to do now, Hunters Against Hate, now that it's an official nonprofit corporation as of last year, finally, um, I'm starting to explore, like, now possibly in time finding volunteers there on the West Coast and stuff like that to see I could have representatives that I can't necessarily, like, if a haunt in 
San Diego wants to have a, a Haunters Against Hate Night. I can't just be there like that, you know, but maybe I could have a representative that could go and be there for that haunt and keep expanding it that way, which would be fantastic. Yeah. That would be. That would be. That's very interesting. That's an interesting idea. It's a good uh, idea, too. I think it's a great one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's, just, it's, even though I work at home, I still, like I said, I still have a regular job. I just can't be like bouncing around everywhere. It's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we work at home. <laughs> I work at home for the last year, but, uh, Funny, Jonathan I and Ellie. That. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But Johnny, Jonathan and Ellie have, have worked at home for, for years. Yeah, I've, I've worked um, from home, I think, 10 years now. Mm. And it's it's such a weird, weird thing. I still am not used to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, and I have a dog. I can't just pick up and leave my dog. Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. Can't do that. Okay. What kind of dog? Because, you know, now you've brought it up. <laughs> Dachshund Corgi mix named Gomez. Oh, it oh. sounds adorable. <laughs> and the name is perfect. <laughs> the name is yeah, perfect. Yeah, the uh-huh. I used to have a St. Bernard, but she died a couple mm. of years ago. So the the big and the little of it, as I would say. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you know, you've, you've teased a little bit an idea that you have that you're, you're looking at starting something. Why don't we go into that? <laughs> well, I'm starting to do a little research right now and laying the groundwork down for potential – HAH con or Haunters Against Tape convention. Um, and in a way, I want to do this to make it more like a fundraiser as opposed to, a, you know, a convention combined with a fundraiser. Right. And merge where it would be basically a horror convention that would also have haunts, but would also be merged with an LGBT festival type where I would have the organizations that are donated to be there to have haunt booths and stuff like that and offer seminars about being inclusive in the industry and stuff like that. I think it would be really enlightening and it could be a lot of fun. I, like I said, I'm just laying it groundwork down, but I've, I've received a lot of support about it because it's something different. You know, Mm -hmm. it, it would be this horror haunts LGBTQ and like this mishmash in a way of all of it. No. So I, it could be a lot of fun. It could be a lot of fun. But of course, the key things with conventions and stuff is, you know, laying the groundwork down, getting the funding and all that stuff that goes with it because I'm a nonprofit. So I can't just like say, oh, yeah, I, I have this. I could just pull it right out and here's your, how much that you need. Right. So, so I, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And of course, COVID doesn't help. No, um, it doesn't. Yeah. I really think that, um, that it sounds like it would be building a better community, a better honk community. And yes. And, and all the profits mm-hmm. from this convention fundraiser would go to these LGBTQ youth organizations. So I think that would be fantastic. That's a great way to raise a lot of money, you know, as opposed to selling one t-shirt at a time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Then, and another thing I'm exploring with this and I would like to do if it comes to its fruition is I want to be able to give out a haunter against hate haunt actor of the year award to an actor that has shown, you know, stepped up to the plate and really like fought hate and, you know, stepped up to people being negative and being bullies and stuff like that. And I think that would be a great incentive to people to be even more accommodating to LGBT people and stuff like that yeah that's a good yeah. idea i mean yeah you know, and and i agree it's it's tough to fundraise um when you're like you said one t-shirt and one book at a time mm-hmm. and also like right. you said various haunts have h h h h h i found a way to mispronounce three letters i think that's a new low even for me H A H nights, <laughs> yeah. Um, things like that are, are great, but I do I, I agree having some kind of a centralized, you know, fun, like a linchpin for the fundraising is a good idea. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great idea. And I, don't even, I, I don't even know if it would have to be something that's done annually. I mean, I'm not adverse to that if it comes to its fruition, but but make it an event, even yeah. if it's 
once every two years, once every three, but an event. Yeah. yeah. And I like the idea of, of having an award or an award ceremony even. Um, yes. Because every haunt has, you know, the costume ball and everybody loves to get dressed up in costumes. I'm, I'm not saying that we don't, <laughs> but it, it would be nice to have it a little more formal, you know, right. um, even like a, a costume prom instead of a, a ball. Yeah, exactly. Of course, how many carries will we have though, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think we could be a little more creative than Carrie. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that would be very important. I, I agree. Um, you know, like maybe do like, now that it's been five years. Well, I was thinking like, I've, I've had in the five books that I, six books now that I've done, two of the books were written, had introductions written by actors that were more than happy to be supportive of Haunters Against Satan. I would really like to reward them with something as well, because that was really nice of them to do that. They didn't have to. And they took time out of their busy schedules to do this for me. So I, it's something I, I will never forget. And it's something I'm indebted to. And I'm always grateful for anyone who is willing to lend a hand. It's, it's really yeah. going above and beyond. So. Yeah, that's, that's great stuff all around. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've always been so enamored with what, with what Haunters Against Hate has done and how it began from something so horrible, as you said, and has now become this force for, for good and positivity in the industry. Who knew? I mean, I had no idea that it would. I mean, as of now, I on Facebook, I Haunters Against Hate has over 12,000 followers now, yeah. which is... Pretty amazing. That's a, that is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and well earned followers. <laughs> it, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of time, and it's a lot of mm -hmm. effort. And I poured a lot of my own money into it, but I think every <laughs> single penny has been worth it. Like I said, if you could, if I'm able to help one person, great. This is in my introduction, volume one. Here's a great story I tell, even though it's pretty sad, but it's a great story. Is the first year that I had a booth at Transworld Poncho. Um, it was just, you know, sitting there by myself. It was a Sunday morning, the last, the last day, 10 a.m., the haunt, the convention had just opened. So there was really no one there yet. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at something. And this woman in a wheelchair goes by, looks at the booth. And I, I watch her and she goes by. Then she comes back and she goes back the other way. And I'm looking, I'm like, okay, that's odd. And I'm sitting there and she comes back and she's like, so she goes, I have a good friend who's 19 years old and ever since Hunters Against Hate started has been enamored by you guys, loves what you do. And I'm like, well, that's fantastic. She goes, unfortunately, last month he was driving home from work, fell asleep, crashed, and he died. Mm. Mm. She goes, I am here to buy a shirt for his mother and myself as an honor to him. And she lost it. I lost it. And... That that moment in time is something I will never forget as long as they live. And that was the first instance of seeing how Haunters Against Tate affected someone. And it was so tragic that this poor 19-year-old lost his life. Yeah. In an accident. Um, it was heartbreaking. But I gave her the shirts. I was like, here, just take them. I mean, this is my gift to you. And, you know, let him live on forever in that way. So, and that was, that was Haunters Against Tate had only existed what for seven months at that point something like that eight months so that that was the my realization that i had to continue i could not stop i had to keep going with this no matter what it took and how much effort and how tired i was on certain <laughs> days stuff, i just could not stop and i have not yet yeah so. that that mm -hmm. is a hell of a story and you're right it's an amazing story and a sad story at the same time yeah yes. but yeah it, it, it it, it's always from my you don't know what it's going to affect. You never yeah. know what your one word can do to one person, exactly. good or bad. Exactly. That's yeah. And that was kind of what I was about to say was, you know, is, is someone who tries to be a strong ally. And I know I have things to learn about my allyship and I know I have growth I have to make too. Um, but one of the things I've always noticed is, like you said, just how a word or a simple gesture 
can mm-hmm. either really make someone brighten someone's day or brighten someone's week or their life, or mm-hmm. it can literally destroy them. Yes. And and it's I've seen that and backstage in the acting room in haunts where you know, like you said, I haven't actually witnessed dead naming per se, but I've seen racial slurs, I've seen um, homosexual slurs used, and I've seen the impact it has on the actors that it was directed towards, even if it was done in a joking manner. The impact yeah. it has, it's, it's easy to read, you know. Yeah, and. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, no, there's some things that are not, you know, you may be thinking you're joking, but it's really not funny. Yeah, I, I'm not laughing. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, right. I, yeah. And you're someone, I myself, I mean, growing up, I mean, my dad was very abusive verbally to me mm. when it came to my sexuality. And I vowed that, you know, I'm not going to let that, I'm going to try and not have that happen to people who reach out to me and I'm going to try to be, you know, encouraging to them and give them good words so they don't have to deal. I mean, people are going to have to deal with it with their family, no matter what. I mean, you're going to have families who are very unaccepting, but if they reach out to me and I've had young actors reach out to me and I've started conversations and I think I've eased their pain a bit or let them know that, you know what, you're not alone. You're always here. Right. You have a family that will look out for you, even though it's not your biological family. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that helps them knowing that they can reach somewhere out, somewhere else. Right. Hence, I also like to donate to the LGBT organizations that focus on youth because yeah. they need those safe spaces. So. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, yeah it, it, it's, you know, it, it, my attitude has always been it takes me no effort to learn someone's name. Right. It takes me no effort to learn their pronouns. It's, it's like two seconds out of my day, but right. it can mean so damn much. Mm-hmm. It does. Yes, it does. Very much so. Yes. And, you know, and it's also about not assuming, Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. someone who presents as, as one way that may not be how they identify. And you have to understand that. Right. Um, and, and if they correct you, then say, oh, I'm very sorry. I did not know. Right. And right. change. Exactly. My apologies. I will do my best in the future to get it right. Yeah. And, and mistakes happen. And, you know, but you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No one's expecting perfection from no. you. No. 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 I mean, perfect. no one. No yeah. one. Whole buddy's I mean, perfect. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, I, I present as a straight female um, woman, and, and I'm not. <laughs> I get jobs because I present that way. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> you know, yeah. right? It's right. it. It's just yeah. Yeah, you never know. And, and yeah, but it, um. So, so if a haunt is not a part of Haunters Against Hate, um, what else can they do to make it clear, especially to like customers and things, that um, that there's a safe place to visit. They can reach out to Hunters Can Take. They can email me. They can ask for literature that I can send them or a banner or something. Information they can get. Say, we'd like to be part of the website. We'd like to be on your website. You know, and then they can promote it that way and say, look, we're a member of Hunters Can Take now. And yeah. that's a good way for people to find out that they are inclusive. Yeah. Or- well, and I was, I've been thinking about this question for a while since it, it came up in a, um, a group that's on Facebook um, about how would I know going to a haunt? Because we visit a lot of haunts. Oh, yeah. Way too many. Way too many. <laughs> and a lot this of times... Is our, this is what our wallet keeps telling us. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times I don't know what we're walking into. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I've ever seen like a rainbow flag outside of a haunt. No, I've, I've no, been trying to I think mean, about it. Huh? That's rare. I mean, I yeah. agree with you. And I, I don't know why we can't put things out. You know, if you have to like distress it so that it looks haunty, fine. It's still recognizable, you know, <laughs> but you're going to, I had an incident incident happen. Was it volume three? of my book that an actor was in it and, you know, listened to haunt. He was with and everything. 
And I got an email from the haunt owner saying, I cannot allow this. You're going to have to remove the name of my haunt from your book because we can't be associated with haunted Michigan State. Oh, wow. So you just, you don't know. They're like, yeah. you know, find what you're doing, but we are very, you know, straight laced, very, you know, religious and we can't have this. So you're going to have to remove us. Yeah. Me. I've never had that happen before in any of my books. It really did. I mean, but I respected the person's wishes. I'm like, I will do what you ask, but what are you going to do? You know? And yeah. It's like, yeah so it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So from that, did you have to change out your submission forms so that yes, from now on, because I've had other incidents happen as a, at, within the last year, mm -hmm. very unpleasant incident, incident, incidents, especially with one particular actor that from now on, I have, I am starting to vet every actor that wants to be in my books. I have to. Yeah. Because it's one, you know, if you want to be in my book just for the publicity and then you turn around and a very hateful human being it diminishes what i'm saying it diminishes the everything and i can't have that and it's unacceptable yeah. you know i and the thing is at that time, i can't research 100 actors all at once it's impossible so that's why like volume five which is actually lgbtq haunters but i didn't rush that i took much longer to put that book out so i could do more research on each actor and get a little information because I will not have, you know, hypocrites in my book. I refuse. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, like I said, that's gotta be tough. And the incident that happened with volume three, three it was not the actor. The actor was horrified by it, horrified yeah. and felt so bad. It was the haunt owner. Uh, I wonder if that actor found a, a better place for them. Yeah. Obviously they need to find a new place. The actor left. He yeah. said, I'm done. Yeah, so. good move. Yep. I mean, and, and that's just it. You know, your haunt, like you said, your haunt family is your family. Yes. And, and you want your family to be loving and accepting of you for who you are. Yeah. And do you have any I ideas for um, actor managers and trainers when they're actually training, you know, the people who work in the haunts? <sighs> See, I, unfortunately, I'm not as involved with, you know, like I don't own a haunt, so I can't really say. But I think just being educated, we, if the haunt owners want to reach out to me to ask, like, what do I need to do when mm -hmm. I am interviewing actors or having a first meeting? What do I need to explain to my actors? Reach out to me. I'll explain what needs to be done, to, you know, being accepting, not using these terms, you know, not you know, using the correct pronouns, you know, recognizing when someone's being verbally abused, even if you're not there to see it. You know, if they come to you and say someone is calling me a very unpleasant homophobic term, you address it immediately. You don't go, oh, don't worry, it won't happen again. No, you address it right there on the spot so it doesn't happen again. And if it does happen again, you let go of that person who's doing it. Yeah, so. and I think that... Um, part of that could be that you put policies in place and that are explained at the beginning with the training yes. when you yes. hire someone. Right. This is standard operating procedure. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, this goes yeah. back to what Patrick was talking about of having good policies, having them written down, yes. and that way, anytime something does happen, you just pull out the book, you know, <laughs> on the table, yeah. and you no one likes day. doing this standing. You know, the SOP. Yeah. You know, it's essential. It yeah. is. And, and that way, even if nobody reads it, it's at least written down somewhere and you can turn to it. You know, and if someone comes back at you and says, well, now, you know, you're being mean to me. You know, it's like you could pull out your exactly. standard rating procedure and go, well, you just broke the rules. So it's not acceptable. Yeah, this is why you get that stuff in writing. Another excellent point Patrick yeah. made was, that, you know, you yeah. want to, if you want to have a good uh, community, you ha it starts with good community rules that are consistently enforced. And communication. And communication, mm -hmm. yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, th th those two things are vital. And so I think that's one of the, the things I th I, I've i learned most from these two episodes is haunts need to start writing the shit down. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. 
They need to get it, get it in writing. What they yeah. want their rules to be, what they want their community to be like, yeah. and so on. And maybe even consider making employee handbooks. If you don't have one, why not? Yeah. Actually, that's another reason I want to, I'm exploring this Hunters Can Take Con, because if I have that, I can have these seminars with haunt industry professionals or actors, and they can host these seminars and explain to people, you know, what they need to do in these operating procedures. You know, so it's educational, too. Yeah. Can't hurt. No, it yeah. cannot hurt. I agree. I mean, that's a great idea, and that's something. And it, it's kind of weird because this is all. A lot of this is stuff. Bigger companies and corporate, even some smaller business, have have wrestled with and HR stuff they've dealt with for years and various you know ways and skill levels and adeptness. But they've they've had to address them. But mm-hmm. haunts because of our nature, we just haven't. Right. We, we don't. Right. We don't operate like we're a business, even when we're a business. It's it's a weird right. thing. Exactly. I mean, yeah. technically, you are a business. You should have procedures in place. I mean, you do. You know, for the fire marshals, everything's in place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. how about well, be. and you know what they need to follow? No, yeah. yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent. So yeah, start writing this stuff down. Start getting policies. That's one of the first things to do. And that way, like you said, if something happens. You've got a document you can refer to and right. point the line, whatever, on page whatever, and say, that's the rule you broke. Yeah, and I have, heard that, I have heard that some of the larger haunts do things like that and are more organized like a business, but it seems fewer and farther in between. Yeah. You know, no, that, it, uh, it's not standard across the industry. I would wager if we pulled haunts, I think only, I think less than 10% would actually have this type of document on file anywhere. Yeah. Right. And the thing is, if you did have this document on file, someone who is being verbally abused, who maybe would not say anything for fear, can say something and say, this person has broken the rules and I, this needs to be addressed. Whereas if there's nothing there, who do they turn to? They don't know if they feel comfortable enough or safe and, enough. Right. Because, I mean, if you think that the owners know that this hate speech is going on, then you may think that the owners are, are in agreement with it when right. they're not. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's about yeah, it's, it's an important thing to do and have. And, and I think in time, maybe it will happen as people become more educated. Mm-hmm. You know, about the whole situation. So let's yeah. hope. Yeah. yeah, and I, I do think that it's important to also have a designated person to report those issues to. Yes, you know. yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. So, an ombudsman of some stripe. Um, yeah, and a, Shalee says mentioning consistently enforcing the rules is also needed. Yeah, oh yes, absolutely, agreed. Um, yeah. yeah, you have to write it down, you have to actually follow what you write is the second right. step. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't work if you don't follow what you write. Mm-hmm. Um, right. It does not work. So yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so yeah, th- honestly, you know, but I, uh, seeing you know your organization, seeing what Hunters Against Hate has done, and seeing you know the response from the haunt community, at least by and large, it's been warming. But it also has highlighted that we do have elements we need to address in the same breath. And it, it's sort of a... It, it, but, but I think with Haunters Against Hate existing now, yeah. these a lot of these issues are indeed being addressed. Yeah, exactly. Which may never have been before. Yeah, well, because yeah. you have these actors willing to speak out more now and say, hey, you know, I have this support group that I can turn to. So I yeah. think... I think it's helped a lot. I really do. You know, I think it's waking people up and saying, you know, this is something that we've never addressed before and we must get on board with this, you know. Yeah. And I think a lot of people uh, prior to the events in 2016 kind of thought the haunt community didn't really have these issues. There's no problem here, man. We're all good. And then <laughs> something so bad happens, you go, oh, right. damn. <laughs> We got problems. Doesn't it always take something awful? Yes. Yeah. It, it does. It really does. And that's, that is unfortunate. But that's, I think, partly human nature and partly just, you know. Maybe we're secretly optimist that I'm everybody's not. good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you want, you really want to believe that everyone is yeah. good. Yeah. And, and you try to look for the good even when it's hard to find it sometimes. So, I yeah. Agree. 
I agree wholeheartedly with that. Yeah. But yeah, and then that, that that trying to find the good though does lead to this kind of naive optimism sometimes, and you got to get shaken away from it sometimes. And unfortunately, it's, that means it takes something bad. True. Well, and, and I, I don't know. I I I just try to be. The bottom line is, I just want to be a good person and do good yeah. things. That, and I, you know. I, and I'm sure I'm sure people take advantage of situations like that too sometimes, but. It, I, I can't change how I am. That's, I am just, that's the per type of person I am. I want to be able to help, you know? Mm -hmm. So agreed. Yeah. Well, real fast. We got about uh, five minutes left or follow it up for five minutes left. Mm -hmm. uh, so any last minute questions, Crystal? Uh, Japes is saying happy birthday, Paul. Oh my God. Uh oh, <laughs> did, did Japes just write him? Huh? You don't know the whole story behind this? No. Oh my god! Uh oh! Okay. I feel like we may have stepped in something, folks. Yes, <laughs> James, what did you do? <laughs> James, um, I know where you live, James. <laughs> Twenty nineteen Midwest Haunters Convention. Um, there I went on the tour to Hellsgate Haunted House. Mm -hmm. Yes. And on the bus ride down, we had a host named. Mm. Chuckles the Clown, who made everyone on the bus think that it was my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so that was on a Friday. Saturday, Chuckles comes up to my booth and tells everyone around there that it's my birthday. And on Sunday, he asked, um, the actor came over and he said, you know, they're doing this raffle. Would you be willing to donate some shirts and stuff? And I was like, absolutely. He goes, you can come on stage. You know, you'll pull the ticket. And I was like, sure. He had the whole convention sing happy birthday to me. It was all a ploy. <laughs> that has been, going, That's a that long has been going on for the past since the past year and a half. I've had I've been at other conventions, not even related to the haunt community, where people have started singing "Happy Birthday" to me. <laughs> it's gone viral. <laughs> so uh, apparently, there is now Paul Lanner Day, mm -hmm. like Rusev Day. Yeah, Every day is Paul Lanner Day. day. Every day. <laughs> of course, catch me on my actual birthday, crickets. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, I tried to look at you for your actual birthday before I said anything, because I'm like, he wouldn't agree to come on a podcast on his birthday, would he? <laughs> I, I, well, apparently I he did. <laughs> I've literally had Chuckles, who's from Chicago, uh -huh. knock on my door in Kentucky with a birthday cake <laughs> with his group because they were on their way to Tennessee. And they surprised me with a birthday cake <laughs> <laughs> on a random day. <laughs> well, on a random day, I'm like, and I'm like, what? Who? What? And there he is in full costume with the birthday cake. Well, people love you, Paul. <laughs> you know what? It's better to have. You know, studies show that people that have more birthdays live longer. Oh, great! <laughs> At that point, I, I what? I'm like 270 now. <laughs> You just made him older. <laughs> I know, really. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh man, pretty funny. Oh. So yeah, that that's that's my cross to bear now. Japes, you're a horrible <laughs> human being. I just want you to yes. know that. I was at a convention in Texas, in Dallas, an LGBT convention, and they sang "Happy Birthday" to me because someone there told them there's this clown that always wishes Paul a happy birthday. <laughs> Oh, well, that uh -huh. was a pleasant surprise to add to this. Oh, it was <laughs> lovely. I'm like, you know what? I'm packing up and going to In-N-Out Burger. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and Jape says that we appreciate you. Yes. The whole uh, world appreciates I think yeah. most. I think we all appreciate you here. Yeah. Um, real fast. One thing. We do have mm. one minor announcement on our end. Yes. We have uh, posted on our Haunt Weekly Store, hauntweeklystore.com. Uh -huh. <laughs> Check it out for your masks and t-shirt needs. We have our Pride Haunt Weekly shirt mm -hmm. uh, designed by Crystal. She made this one. And all profits from that are going to Haunters right. Against Hate. Oh, wow. Yeah. So oh, buy, wow. buy, the, buy the, if you want to support both Haunt Weekly and Haunters Against Hate, boo, Chikiyaka Chance. <laughs> <laughs> See? I, I just had another um, person, Wicked, Wicked Hour, Des Witch, Witching Hour Designs, mm -hmm. who created Try bad shirt, and they're donating the pros or part of the proceeds to Hunters Can Say, which is really awesome. 
Yes, I uh, saw that. That was uh, really pretty. Yes. Really, really nice, you know. Mm-hmm. Little, things like that mean the world to me. They really do. They really touch me more than people realize. You know, mm-hmm. it just, it truly tickles me. Well, it was it was interesting. When we set up the store, we were talking about the t-shirt designs we wanted. And like the, it was in the top tier. We had to get a pride one. Yeah, um, it was the third design I made. I yeah. made yours and then mine. Um, not the ones that are on the site, but no. alternatives that'll be coming out later. Yeah, we got a, like a, a queue pride. and I'm doing, we're, we're, we're trickling. It takes mm-hmm. a little while to set up the designs and get them print ready. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, that's why it takes time. It just you, you, Paul knows all this. Yeah. It, yes, I do. I, I don't know. Do you even know what I do for a living? You said advertising. I, I do packaging design for Warner Brothers. Oh. Oh, wow. Nice. That's my regular. I've been working with them for 17 years. Wow. So a regular job. So I know all about design and packaging and deadlines and all that stuff. I get it completely. Believe me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I come from a, a print journalism and graphic design background, so okay. Okay. you know, yeah. I, I, I've, I've spent most of my life building websites and also printing things. Those right. are my okay. those are my two jams. Yeah, and I've been um, administrative assistant slash HR person slash coordinator for events for twenty plus years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, with with creating events and stuff that I'm green on, but uh, thankfully. One of my dearest friends here does that for a living, like these LGBT organization uh, events he runs, and I'm actually co-producer of one of them. So he's helping me navigate this, which is great. And Good. the other thing too is, I'm curious to see. We'll see. I mean, I don't know if I yeah. should let this. Out. Well, I don't care. But <laughs> I, I, no one's I'm, listening. I'm expanding my booth for Trans World this year, and I'm planning on designing it like an '80s style leather gay bar. Oh wow, that'll so be fun! That goes over. <laughs> <laughs> so you're designing it like the Phoenix here in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have the have the flashing neon sign. Yep. You know, <laughs> come up to the bar. And, you know, oh, we want a shirt, but can we also get whipped? <laughs> <You> know, <so. laughs> Paul, when you come to New Orleans, you got to swing by the Phoenix. Just trust me. <laughs> that that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it does. It does. The it booth, like a lot of fun. The booth idea. The booth, yeah. yeah. And then the going to the Phoenix is fun too. But. Yeah, I'll be banned for life. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, if you're going out, go out with a bang. That's what I say. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Then. You just found that button tonight, so you had to use no. it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, Paul, let the nice people know where they can find more info about Haunters Against Hate and where they can get in touch with you. Well, the key is to go to HauntersAgainstHate.com. Go to the website. You can read about the organizations I've donated to, some of the or the a lot of the haunts that are part of Haunters Against Hate. There's pictures on there. There's the store where you can buy T-shirts, buy patches, buy the books. And then the last page is the contact form where you can send an email. And there's also the Facebook page, Hunters Against Steve. So those are the those are the two main places. And definitely follow uh, Hunters Against Hate absolutely everywhere you can. Well, a great organization that deserves all the love the industry can throw behind it. I mean, I appreciate that. So yeah, Paul, it's been an absolute gem talking to you. It's been wonderful. I really appreciate you having me on. That's really kind. Well, yeah, it's been a long time in the making on it, yeah. our end <laughs> it, 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 it's been a long time we're, we're, we're bad about inviting guests we just like we get caught up in the day-to-day stuff and like future planning episodes isn't really our thing i don't know if people notice we're, we don't always tend to have like the greatest future planning for these so but we're very glad we're able I to do get that you. in my day job yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, we plan all the time in our day jobs. We don't. We don't need it to tack on any additional planning. <laughs> right, right. Well, if you want to plan with us and help us plan future episodes, you can catch us at hauntweekly.com. We're Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, YouTube.com/slash Haunt Weekly is our YouTube channel. All previous episodes are there for easy access, including playlists and neat stuff like that. And as always, you can catch us on Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher. Wherever you get podcasts from, they haven't kicked us out yet, then they're going to. (laughs) So until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And thank you again, Paul. We will see you all next week. Take care.